Oh, this is Scott again. Say, so, I apologize. It's been a few weeks since I've done one of these. Um, last time we were talking about forecasting with decomposition. This time I want to get into forecasting with exponential smoothing, and next time we'll talk about uh, a powerful technique, Holt Winters um, linear linear trend. So um, I've got a few slides that I want to go through just to to give you kind of a high level. You and I actually put these together a few weeks. I've got to um, <laughs> remember what I have here. Um, and then I've got some R code that we can go through. I always mean these to be pretty short in nature, so um, bear with me there. So essentially, in exponential smoothing, what we have is we have the ability to um, generate a forecast based upon past observation and the weight, how much we're going to take in a previous observation uh, mutes over time. So these weights decay or lessen uh, in an exponential uh, format. So for example, um, and, and they're often called decay, um, you can dampening techniques, et cetera. But imagine we're at y, uh, uh, I'm sorry, y sub t plus one, then y sub t is going to have an effect, but y sub t minus one is gonna have less of an effect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, and those are gonna uh, dampen in, again, an exponential form. Um, we're gonna be using a, a, a package uh, from Hyman um, SES, and um, it's applicable when there's really no trend or seasonal uh, pattern um, in the data, right? And we've talked a little bit about that in previous sessions, and we're gonna talk about it a lot more when we get into uh, some of these other forecasting techniques. Um, but just some variations of SES you can see here. There's a naive method, which we'll talk about today, and the average method, weighted average method. And so the parameters um, are is essentially alpha, which is a smoothing parameter, and this between zero and one. And so the larger alpha means the more weight is on the most recent observation, right? So Y sub T and quicker dampening. Um, smaller alpha is that the past observations really kind of get an equal weighting as we move backward in the forecast. So, um, So if we look at these alternative forms, and I just go over these quickly so that you have a, a reference, kind of know what they're what they're called. Um, you know, we have a series of equations, right? Um, you know, given here, uh, y sub t minus one, y sub uh, y hat um, three given two, four given three, et cetera. And so if you put all these together, you can essentially create a sum, right, that's represented here. Um, also, there are component forms. Um, so you know, we have the, the forecasting equation here, and then the, the actual smoothing equation uh, given here. I don't wanna get too much into the mathematics. I think most people are here in the series for to see the application of R. Um, so, and then the, the the flat forecast given given here, and um, and so remember that all of these forecasts are really um, applicable when there is no trend or no seasonal uh, component uh, to go through. And then there's an optimization, right? So we can actually find the optimal uh, alpha and initial level. Um, by minimizing the sum square errors that we, we've talked about previously, okay? I know that's a lot very very quickly, um, but again, I, I wanna jump right into R, and that way we can um, illustrate at least some of these, some of these concepts. Um, and of course, there's a lot available on the, the internet as well. Um, and, and Hyman is always a, a great reference. All right, so speaking of Hyman, I'm using this package. It was created um, by Hyman and Dr. A. 
Um, so I'm going to load that package, and then I'm going to reference some some uh, data that they have. Um, here's a reference Hyman and Dr. A. And so I'm looking at uh, Saudi Arabia oil production here, um, and just doing a simple uh, plot of that. So again, this this data doesn't really seem to have a trend. It doesn't really seem to have any seasonal variation. So it's applicable to exponential forecasting. And of course, that was simple in R, just a simple plot. Now we're going to look at um, bringing in the um, um, SES uh, package from from Hyman and uh, estimating the parameters. So um, again, I have I'm just basically repeating myself here, but I'm actually calling the function and and sticking it in FC here, um, and then I'm coming up with the with the accuracy here. And hopefully, you can see here the mean error, the root mean square error. Uh, et cetera, some of the different estimates that, that we've talked about previously. So again, that gives me the error forecast, but what if I want the to actually calculate alpha? And one of the things that I can do is, um, since I'm doing a simple forecasting, and I'm going to say H is, is 4 here, and I'm just going to execute that, um, and then I'm going to um, bring back the alpha parameter and then just we, we can print it out right so alpha here is 0 0.834 um, and so what what I really kind of have in mind I th there's a lot more that we can demonstrate but what I'd like to do with this first initial series is go through cover these things pretty pretty quickly um, and so we're at R14 and then I have a feeling that I'll, I'll be following up um, with a deeper dive into each one of these these topics, just kind of let you know kind of what I, I thought that I had um, this morning. A couple other things that we could do, let's say we could say, you know, forecast, um, and since we have this FC, we could essentially do that, um, and then we could get the estimate of the point as forecast. You might want to do that in R, or you might want to create just a summary for this as well. Um, whoops, I got to spell it right. And then I get that um, as well. So um, you can see here that I've got my, my alpha, my initial states, uh, even a Kaiki information criterion, uh, Bay Schwartz, information uh, criterion here. So that's a uh, uh, summary is a, is a very useful command as well. Um, and then let's see. Um, oh, and you know, obviously, you if you want to see more about this SES package, you can uh, do that as well and in, in, um, in studio and get information there. Okay, so I will quit uh, now for brevity. And next time we'll get into Holt's Linear Trend. I hope you have a good week. Thanks.